going on guys? Chad here with Greenlight Shooting and welcome to this new video. So this video is going to be a little different than my normal videos. Normally we talk about reviews and tips and tricks and stuff like that. And this time we're going to talk about something that's a little more serious. We're talking about concealed carry in real world applications. Now we're not going to get into anything political. That's not what this channel is. You know, we're not talking about gun free zones or banning this or that or second amendment, anything like that. That's not what this channel is made for. Um, however, I do want to talk about kind of my thoughts and approach to concealed carry and where they started and why they started that way and how they've shifted and where I am now because of recent sh social events in the US. Um, so this video is going to be a little less kind of flashy than all the other videos. Uh, it's just going to kind of be a discussion video, but I hope that it gets some things stirring. Uh, I hope that it just helps some of you guys out. So uh, yeah, let's just dive into it and see where it goes. When I first started getting into guns and the shooting community as a whole, I was working as a cashier at a gun store. I knew nothing about guns. After listening and shadowing, you know, gun salesmen and stuff like that, I eventually worked my way up to selling guns. The reason I'm telling you this, I guess, is because my entire education into guns and, and the shooting community and what was accepted and everything like that, I learned from this select group of gun salesmen and this relatively small group of gun customers. When we'd sell concealed carry guns, we were pushing the very obvious choices. M&P Shield, LCPs, XDSs, lightweight 38 revolver, things that are like just the obvious choice for concealed carry. A lot of the conversations that were happening between salesman and customer were most shootings happen in a very close proximity. There's a, a very limited amount of rounds that are thrown down range. So essentially if you have a gun that's holding five or six rounds, you're fine. Like if you have shot all those rounds and you still didn't win, that's probably because you lost. And that was kind of the mentality that we went with. And I knew nothing different, so that's what I followed. And when I bought my first concealed carry gun, got my permit and everything, it was a Springfield XDS 45. I was like, if I'm ever gonna have to use this thing, it's gonna be in a close proximity. I've got a big caliber that can hopefully do the job better and faster and more efficiently. I've got five rounds, which is totally enough to shoot from here to here. And if that's all that there ever was, I guess that holds some weight. But recently, I've thought a lot about concealed carry. Now this might have a lot to do with where I live, how I live, my demographics, stuff like that. But the whole one-on-one -on -one close proximity mugger scenario or someone wanting something from me or they're gonna hurt me or something like that, doesn't scare me near as much. You know, like if someone wants my wallet, I'd like to think I'm gonna give him my wallet, or if someone wants to fight me, like, you know, really hurt me, I'd like to think that I would have the self-discipline that I'm not gonna draw my gun and shoot on something like that. First of all, there's some major legal ramifications that come along with that, um, but, you know, in today's day and age, if you hand over your wallet, so much is replaceable, and it's just not worth a life. So those kinds of things really don't scare me as much as they used to. What does scare me? is active shooter, mass shooter situations. Those scare the hell out of me. Just as a short example to this, my wife and I were out in a, a department store in like a, you know, a commercial area last holiday season, and there were cops everywhere. We didn't know what was going on. I ran into like someone I knew, I asked them, and they said, uh, there's a potential active shooter situation going on in the parking lot and in the store that we were in. I had my XDS 45 on me at the time, but it's like, I'm in this big store, and if someone comes in and starts just open firing, what am I gonna do with my five rounds of 45 that I can't shoot accurately past 20 feet? And in light of recent social events, you know, here in the US, at the time of the, the, this video was posted, about a week ago in Orlando, Florida, there was a, a big time massive active shooter shooting. You know, it killed a lot of people, injured a lot of people. And something like that is just so scary because there's no control. Like you, it can happen anywhere, anytime, and for no reason. You know, it's not like they, like a shooter comes in wanting to steal your money. They legitimately just want to hurt people. And that terrifies me because that can happen anywhere. The movie theater shooting, school shootings, there's so much. Ugh, you know, it just, 
Ugh, yeah, this is the side of shooting I don't like to think about. Sorry, that got a little intense there for a minute. But the reason I bring this up is because, you know, as my wife and I are standing in this department store and you imagine an active shooter coming in and just opening fire, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do with the Springfield XDS-45? Nothing. I can't lay covering fire. I've got five rounds. You know, I can't shoot a target accurately past 20 feet with this thing. It's really got me thinking in light of all these, you know, shootings and, and just mass things that have been going on. Like, if I could have one concealed carry with me, what would it be? And honestly, it's kind of come down to something similar to a Glock 19. It holds 15 rounds in a mag. Uh, it's something I can shoot accurately out to at least 25, 30 yards. So that's where my head's been at with concealed carry recently. I think I'm gonna give up that single stack, small grip thing and go with more of a double stack, full grip gun that is still concealable. It obviously can still protect you in those one-on-one -on -one close proximity things if it truly, truly came down to that but it's really a much more ideal weapon in terms of defending yourself and your family if something like an active shooter happened to break out where you were. So yeah, those one-on-one -on -one close proximity things are, are really not my priority, I guess, to be prepared for. It's much more those open, active shooters that have no agenda other than hurting people. Those are the kinds of situations that I want to be prepared for, that I want to be trained for, and those are the kinds of weapons I want to have on me to be able to protect me and my family in situations like that. Phew. <laughs> That was a much, much, much more intense video than normal. Uh, I apologize about that, but I, I hope that it opens some eyes for you guys, especially those new shooters who are just getting into concealed carry. I hope that it at least gives you a different perspective to think about. Um, but anyways, please let me know your thoughts down, down below. If you liked this video, please like it. If you think that it could help other people, please share the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. You know, we've got these main videos coming every Friday. We've got behind the scenes, vlogs, personal life, stuff like that coming every Monday. So I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out these other two videos if you haven't, and we'll see you next week on Greenlight Shooting.